This is Cooking Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I will have to say, this is take two, because I actually was recording and we had a little bit of a sound problem, but it's fixed now. Connor's been very patient, which I appreciate, as always, mate. So sorry, we kind of have to do this again. Listen, time is money, mate. I ain't got all day. All right, money, mate. Chill. <laughs> um, yeah, look, Van Heerden was always the guy that was always spoken about. We had that interview with, with Eddie Hearn a few weeks before. But... Um, there was a gap in between that fight being announced. I think the fight was meant to be announced on the Akori night. It wasn't. It was like a week, 10 days. And I'm assuming you were kind of exploring the possibility of a potential Kell Brook fight is why that, there was a delay in announcing that Van Heerden fight. For my team, yeah, there was negotiations with um, Kell Brook Kel, and Kell Brook's team. They reached out to us, believe it or not, um, asking for the fight. So, and when the numbers were discussed, 10 million was wasn't in the equation I mean it's silly money when you're, you're talking them numbers um, so there was a delay but I was like to my team I'm not going to wait around I'm not going to go well is it going to happen it's not going to happen I wanted to fight April 16th um, and I wasn't going to wait around for no man irrelevant uh, time you can't play replace time you know I'm at an important stage of my career where time is so important you know I'm building I'm developing I'm growing so the money will always come the money will come with wins, but time is something you don't get back. So I weren't going to wait around for a potential massive showdown with Kell Brook um, and miss out on April 16th. If the deal got done, then the deal could have got done. It would have been a month later on. I would have fought a month or two, so to speak, which ain't the end of the world. But when he started talking 10 million, I said, listen, Van Herden's the one. I mean, Van Herden's the man. Um, and my mind never veered off of that. You know, it was always at the forefront of my mind. And here we are. I mean, it was, we just saw it as kind of a week, but I suppose from your perspective, why would you kind of delay again, if you want to fight April 16th, why would you de delay that process and kind of be in limbo of who you're fighting when the fight potentially isn't going to happen and you would have wasted time? Is that the way you saw that? Most definitely. I went in limbo because in my head I was fighting Van Heerden. He accepted the fight, the deal was done, the date was set, the venue was booked, that Van Herden was at the forefront of my mind. The Kelbrook fight got made great. Great is what, it, you know, massive showdown, big massive fight. That can come at a later date. And we're so far apart on the numbers that 10 million ain't gonna, ain't gonna go overnight. Oh yeah, we'll accept your offer of half that. It don't, it don't work like that. So at the end of the day, I'm at a pro progression in my career. I ain't gonna wait around for no one. I ain't gonna put myself in limbo. Um, I want to fight, you know, so everyone wants the big fights out there. Of course I want the big fights, but I'm at a time in my career where I can't afford to be wasting time. Uh, it was the same when, you know, I really wanted to fight for the British title and that was in negotiations. Couldn't get made. I weren't going to wait around. So, um, and, you know, it's the same for, for anything else. I'm not going to wait around for no one. There's always different avenues we can take. What's the feedback like you've had? We knew it was going to be Van Heerden because it was spoken about for so long, but since the fight was announced for uh, Manchester Arena on April 16th, what's the feedback you've had uh, regarding Van Heerden as an opponent for you? Everyone's talking like he's an easy night's work, which is a, is it, and saying, oh, why are you fighting this guy? Well, it's, a, it's like a backhanded compliment. It really is because I'm thinking, Coy, he's, he's a tough fighter. First Southpaw, former world champion. So, just thought come off a um, technical draw to Jaron Boots Ennis. Um, lost to Errol Spence in six rounds. So it's, it's, a, it's a massive compliment to me, to be honest. I know it's a backhanded compliment, but it's, I take it still as a compliment. So, you know, I'm preparing for the best Van Herden. Um, who really believes he can, he's going to come to win. So. You know, it's all about progression. You've got to fight different styles. And when you get to the top, you're not nothing throws you off because there's great world-class um, southpaws that you know I'm going to have to deal with um, in the future. So this puts me in good stead for that. Whoever's hitting the bag downstairs is shaking the floor. Have you got some heavy hitters down there? Right, we're all heavy hitters in the matchroom boxing gym. Oh, no, genuinely are. You can feel it, can't you? Anyway, yeah. Yeah, you should you see it when I eat it. <laughs> what happens? People go through. Yeah, people go through. <laughs> Um, what's important is that you and Tony, Eddie, your team believe that Van Heerden is, whether it's a small step up 
big step up, whatever it is, from your previous four opponents? Because that's how your career is kind of being judged now from Formella, isn't it, really? I know you've kind of had what you've had before that, but everyone always talks about that period from Formella onwards. Because it really is from Formella onwards where the progression has been dr so drastic. But then again, it may not... It's, I think it's just down to the level of opposition I fight. The better the opposition, the better I perform. And when I've had to level up, I do. And that's really what it comes down to. You know, I raise the bar. So, again, it comes down to where's the ceiling in my career? Is there any? You know, how far can, how far can we go? And every time that these questions are put to me, I, I answer them quite convincingly. Um, Van Herden presents different struggles to Vargas, Granados, Formella and Algeri. First half poor on paper. Uh, he's tough, he's durable, just different styles we've got to work out. Again, I haven't had a massive amateur background, which people now forget. These styles you have to learn to deal with. Um, so I'm excited for the challenge. You know, I accept all challenges and I believe I can take care of anyone on the night. The fight goes to Manchester Arena, uh, the AO Arena, uh, on the 16th. There was talk about it being at the O2, but yeah, how comes the fight ended up in Manchester? Well, there's a few options, and you know, I, I said to my team, I love to fight in Manchester, headline in Manchester. I love Manchester. You know, I lived there for for six, seven months, so it was um, when I trained with Ricky Atten. So it's um, yeah, it's a spot, it's a vibe. I like Manchester. It's a fighting city. Yeah, absolutely. I think where you're kind of where you have had the predominantly most of your fights in London. When you do fight, people are like, well, why is he fighting up there? But really, you could be fighting absolutely anywhere. It makes well, no difference. Well, Liverpool was amazing. Liverpool was what a great reception, and you know I expect the same from Manchester. And um, every time I have fought there, they've always shown me love, and you know they're, they're great supporters. And you know I'm looking forward to taking entertainment up north. Just coming away from you for a second, what, what have you made of the situation with with Brook and and Khan? Do, do you think Khan comes back? Do you think a rematch materialises? I mean, everyone's had their view on kind of these uh, rematch clause being evoked, etc. Have you got a um, a comment on that? Greed is one hell of a thing. But then when you're going out buying, buying 500 grand motors, I can see why you need the rematch. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, greed's one hell of a thing, man. It can't team have been in touch with our team. And then you just sort of think to yourself, like, <laughs> like, why, mate? Do you know what I mean? Like, for what? Like, I don't think there's any amount of money I could place on that rehappening again. Like, no money. I'd save myself the embarrassment. But each to their own, innit? I mean, there was a call after their fight that both of them should possibly call it a day from certain professionals, etc. But, I mean, for Amir Khan, because he lost the fight, I, I can see that angle. But for Kel Brook, he's obviously on a high from beating Khan. So, I, mean, I think Brook. I think Brook looked good. I think Brook looked great. He looked strong. He looked powerful. He looked focused. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind seeing Brook fight again. Whether it's me, not really interested in the junior fight. Um, I'd say the only fight really there is me. To be honest, I, I wouldn't, I'm not too interested in watching a junior fight. But that's my opinion. I'm not interested in seeing the calm rematch either. But I think there is talk of that fight potentially happening between Brook and Newbank now. I'm not too sure. Um, you got to let them crack on and do what they got to do. I can't see it personally, but listen, money always talks, doesn't it? And you and Newbank, was that just a, a passing moment of talk? No. Listen, we're at different stages of our career. Um, but is it a future potential show, Dan, 100%? That fight can happen any time. Like honestly, genuinely, probably walking around a uh, uh, middle now, so it don't it don't concern me at all. Uh, a word on Michael McKinson, who obviously was scheduled to fight uh, Virgil Ortiz. He had a nightmare that week because obviously there was about three opponent changes. He ended up did having a fight, come through that. But yeah, I mean, has that slipped away from McKinson that Ortiz fight? You think now? Oh, a million percent. I think Virgil Ortiz. He had um, well, it's down to the weight cut, so I don't think he'll be competing a well weight at all. You know, um, I can't see him going, competing a world weight. I felt for McKinson because he was like, this was like his moment. 
Do you know what I mean? So to have that snatch from him to fight then someone who was negative and and made the whole fight negative, it just you just feel for him, didn't you? You do, because I was rooting for him against uh, Virgil. I don't, I'm not sure if he would have won it, but I was rooting for him, hoping he did. But yeah, it's just it's just one of them things, man. Just just unlucky. You got a pick for Marco and Jenkins this weekend. Oh, damn, I forgot that was happening. Um, nah, because there's so much boxing on. Like, there's boxing. Like, last week, the boxing, you had Probellum, you had... Sky, the Zone. You yeah. had the Zone. I'm there like that on my phone trying to get, get all of them up. So, um, I don't know, because Jenkins did get... He got knocked out by Echo. Um, Echo won quite convincingly. So, it's like... What Jenkins got left, in my opinion, he looked okay against Julius Ndongo. Um, Julius Ndongo looks shot, but it sh it's just it's still, it should it should be Marco should beat him. It should beat him, but I'm not um, not 100 percent sure. I'm mm, 60 40 to Marco. Uh, fights on Saturday. Um, how's the baby? Ah, oh, he's good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like walking. He's he's good. He's so funny. All right. Well, listen. Um, yeah, two weeks out. Two weeks on Saturday. Manchester AO Arena live on the Zone. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we'll catch up fight week. But appreciate your time. Have you got anything else you'd like to say? Just grateful for everyone supporting me as always and you know it's another step in the right direction so thank every single one of you Colin Ben thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV and uh, like I said we'll catch you fight week Bosh Welcome Team Everlast to the Team Everlast Fitness Day. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.